salt is playing mind games with a cockroach leg. The inventor is trying to control the insect's limb with his brain. And we're trying to build intuitive interfaces to the mind. Uh, we're trying to capture the thoughts that you're having and understand them to interface with software. Uh, we're working towards building a device that can build real objects with just your mind. And along the way, we're learning about neuroscience. Salt starts out with music, whose sound waves are similar to electrical patterns of the brain, to identify the frequencies that stimulate the cockroach leg. The waves bring the insect's muscles to life, the leg moves, and computer software keeps a record. What we do with the software is we capture how the leg moves to which particular stimulus. So we have lots of different wavelengths in the, in the music, and we can find out which one will actually stimulate it in a controlled fashion. So in this way, the computer learns how to uh, control the leg. Once that lesson is learned, Salt dons a neuro headset that reads the electrical waves being emitted by his brain. The system is trained to read his thoughts. In this case, the waves created by the intention to move the roach's leg. So I captured how I'm thinking about pushing the leg. And then when the computer detects that again, it then passes that information on from what it's learned about the cockroach leg to be able to control it. So we're controlling the leg with your mind. The ultimate goal, says Salt, is to develop software that will establish a direct connection between the brain and a computer. And that is already happening. Smile, and it's the holding of the muscles. Yeah. Salt is working with teenager Sergio Seguel, who has invented a robot hand. They're using Salt's research to control the hand using mind signals. For example, queremos... For example, we want to experiment with someone who has an orthopedic arm so they can move it with their head by thinking about it moving. It's incredible. And if successful, Salt says the technology could be transformative, particularly in the field of prosthetics, forging a potentially life-changing link between mind and machine. Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Wednesday, November 28th, 2012, and I'm Darko. All right, um, I'm going to cover eugenics today. I've been covering the Middle East a lot um, in the economy, but uh, today is strictly eugenics and uh, cyborgs and, quote, science fiction, right? Like uh, like this stuff, right? It was all about science fiction 20, 30 years ago. No, it was probably existed. They're just uh, more sophisticated, and uh, they're showing us a little bit of their progress. Um, but we're talking about augmented reality as far as this guy goes. Mind machine researchers get leg up from cockroach. This, of course, is not going to be used just for prosthetics. Uh, that's what they tell the people. But uh, it's really going to be used for defense applications. Imagine being able to mind control, uh, through your mind, control uh, uh, masses of people. Take a group of people and, and make their heads snap or uh, their hearts explode. You know, talking about super soldiers and that. Uh, Stanford researchers advance performance of thought control computer cursors. Uh, the researchers have designed the fastest, most accurate mathematical algorithm yet for brain implantable prosthetic systems that can help the disabled people maneuver computer cursors with their thoughts or uh, eventually have uh, cyborgs and robots uh, be able to uh, move things, not just move things, uh, you know, independently, autonomously as a robot without being controlled by an outside source but then actually being able to interface itself with other computers. It's uh, pretty interesting stuff. Uh, neuroscientists, that's what we're talking about, neuroscience successfully controls the dreams of rats. Could humans be next? Like I said before, probably already been doing this since uh, technology and microwaves were designed back in, what, at least the 50s? So, you know you're getting attacked in your dreams by these a-holes. Um, and this is, of course, for mind control from September 3rd, 2012. Go in there and check it out. I've covered that before. Um, Microsoft files patent for augmented reality smart glasses. We know that Google has um, uh, created this. Uh, Google's Project Glass. Google is planning to deliver an augmented reality glasses to developers earlier next year and then follow with a release to consumers in 2014. But a patent was applied for by Microsoft and described how the eyewear could be used to bring up statistics over a wearer's view of a baseball game or details of characters in a play. So kind of like the Terminator, right? Um, U.S. super soldiers of the future will be genetically modified transhumans capable of superhuman feats. So this is just to give you some background 
uh, lay the foundation for what we're talking about here. And then you got James Holmes, Inmates, Strange Tale of Confession and Suicide's uh, Efforts. Uh, of course, they start off with this article uh, basically discrediting this witness and anything that he said. Well, of course, because they have a lot to hide. Um, this, this individual, James Holmes, uh, was most likely a mind control patsy, part of an experiment um, in Colorado, uh, like the earlier project, uh, was a Project Monarch or MK Ultra, one of those uh, back at Columbine back in the 90s, where they started uh, killing mostly, targeting mostly Christians. Most people don't uh, uh, notice that. But it goes on here and it says, yeah, it would be virtually impossible for this individual to have any communications with Holmes while he was in prison. But he said that uh, the sporadic conversation continued even after Holmes was moved to another cell in the area, saying uh, that Holmes told him he felt like he was in a video game during the shooting, that he wasn't on his meds and nobody would help him. He also mentioned uh, NLP, presumably Neuro Linguistic Programming, a much scorned and, much scorned and outmoded approach to psychotherapy because it's supposed to help people right now. It's for defense. It's for killing people and controlling people and carrying out psychological operations and claimed to have been programmed to kill by an evil therapist. He was known to be a therapist, to see a therapist. That's well known. And uh, the therapist said that uh, he was in pretty bad shape. So he said when he got out of his car, he said he wasn't programmed anymore. Kind of, kind of crazy. He was trying to run it by him, basically. So there you go. Mark Dice is trying to chop this story up and discredit it. Really, really nice. Um, someone asked me about Mark Dice. I don't know about him. I think, I don't know if he's a shill. It's hard to tell, right? But I don't trust the guy. Jesse Ventura, I think he's a little bit lucky. And I think he's, um, he has a good heart. So that's just what I think about it. But I, I can't stand the onion, like I said yesterday, that, that story that a news source, uh, it's not even a news source, it's a satire. But I don't respect it uh, as any kind of source of information. Um, but uh, people like Mark Dice, or I've seen other on YouTube, that uh, basically act as if they're conspiracy theorists and attack other conspiracy theorists, uh, I don't really have much respect for either. Uh, I don't consider myself a conspiracy theorist. I try to take a bunch of facts and information and present it and let people make their own decisions. So. All right, um, so part of the thing uh, with, uh, with uh, programming and super soldiers and just the military in general is, uh, is self-destruct. Uh, when, when the soldier uh, is no longer useful, uh, they self-destruct, i.e. they kill themselves or they attempt it, what, much like James Holmes was trying to do with his half ass attempt in prison. Um, you probably heard of that. All right, in suicide epidemic, military wrestles with prosecuting troops who attempt it. So now, before, they want to do a nasal spray for suicide for soldiers because, well, they don't like the mission, right? They're not robots. They're humans. Once they realize that they're not over there to fight for their freedom but to help not just enslave their own people, Americans, uh, but also enslave other people as well. And they don't like that. And they start to have to uh, come to terms with that as a human being with a soul. And, um, you know, robots, they, you know, that's what's so great about robots. Even scientists say they're more ethical than humans as killers. So now, uh, now they're going to actually uh, start to call it self-injury, right? Interesting, too, because I just saw an article that, that actually said uh, an army mom was saying that suicides in the military are getting out of hand. Remember, I just covered this yesterday. And what did she say? She didn't blame the military uh, for the mission that they're putting them in. Uh, or the politicians, no, she blamed the person for having a sick mind. So there you go. That was a nice little propaganda going out to the military families by Army Times. They experiment on these uh, on these soldiers, you know, and Marines. It's 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 tragic because they have a perfect opportunity to experiment with all these prosthetic limbs that will segue into cyborgs and stuff like that. Uh, they have a whole surplus and pool of uh, of young men who have their arms and legs blown off so they get you know it's a it's a good uh, good time for for scientists um, bbc 3 revives dark edge with assisted suicide sitcom so yeah they're under fire uh basically they're gonna have a comedy series it goes on here and it says that uh a new show with the premise of three words which are almost impossible put in the same sentence assisted suicide comedy so am i against Assisted suicide? No, I'm not. But uh, these people want a bunch of people to die by 2050. They, they want to call numbers. And uh, just people need to be aware of that, uh, that why they're rolling this out at this particular time. DARPA wants army. And of course, like I've said before, imagine, imagine when, they, uh, when, they, when they say that you're no longer fit mentally because you're a political deviant or something like that. You have anti-authority disorder um, and they put you down. 
and they call it assisted suicide, right? And here we go with go again with DARPA. They want an army of networked amateur astronomers to watch the sky for space junk and aliens. They announce a program to utilize amateur astronomers to help watch space for any dangerous junk that may be threatening satellites or other spacecraft and even the Earth. It's called Space View. And it goes on and it says that uh, a U.S. Air Force program charged with cataloging and observing space objects to identify potential near-term collisions. So not all that exciting, but there's this. From November 8th, BBC prevents astronomer from listening for signs of extraterrestrial life on distant planet from the Telegraph. This professor who hosts the show with comedian Dara O'Brien said he had hoped to point the Droddell Bank telescope at the planet, um, whatever this is, uh, Threpleton Holmes B after it was discovered live on air last year and listened for signs of life but he claimed that he's being prevented from doing so because of the corporation was concerned that a discovery of aliens could violate BBC regulations. Speaking on the BBC radio breakfast show on well this was a while ago on Wednesday November 8th uh, the professor said the BBC actually said you can't do that we need to go through the regulations and health and safety and everything because they care so much about health and safety in case we discover a signal from an alien civilization I said, you mean uh, we would discover the f first hint that there is other intelligent life in the universe beyond Earth, live on air, and you're worried about the health and safety of it? It was incredible. They did have guidelines and compliance. Then uh, what will NASA do with the donated National Reconnaissance Office uh, telescopes? That's right. So it goes on there says that they donated uh, to NASA these uh, big uh, spy satellites. So I wonder what they're going to do for them. Because hmm. NASA also isn't allowed to use the telescopes for any Earth uh, observing missions. One, two, Kalamazoo. Three, four, Jersey Shore. Five, six, West Phoenix. A thousand eight, a thousand nine, Dallas, Denver, Anaheim. So that was actually a T-Mobile commercial that someone sent me the link to from July 2012. And I was making it nice and cute to see all those cell towers, you know, uh, uh, beaming you with electromagnetic frequencies, uh, causing radiation, sterilizing, uh, headaches, uh, all sorts of issues, especially with mind control because satellites... You know, besides satellites and uh, microwaves, uh, these cellular uh, towers are also uh, responsible for um, behavior modification um, methods. And, uh, you know, like the, how they like to make it so cute about all these towers, um, just like that one story where people were complaining about this tower being uh, put over somewhere. They weren't complaining about the health issues. Uh, no, they weren't. They were complaining about how ugly it was. Uh, these people are, are uh, complaining too. Cell tower regulations frustrate homeowners. Uh, basically, they have these uh, cell towers uh, right on top of their house, a short distance from her son's bedrooms. They were surprised they weren't notified. Well, like I said, they're, you're never notified. They just do it, and they tell you later, tell you to like it. See, here, and they tell you that it's safe, right? Uh, that the cell phone towers are safe as long as the facility adheres to federal regulatory requirements limiting human exposure. Even though the International Agency for Research on Cancer classifies radio frequency electromagnetic fields, which are emitted by wireless phone and cell towers as a possible human carcinogen, i.e. causes cancer. You can check out the link here, long-term effects of electromagnetic radiation. Prolonged exposure is tumors, irritable bowel disease, damage to intestinal mucus lining, colon cancer, and more sensitive colons, among like, many other things, like I mentioned. Back in 1999, uh, they basically increased uh, the radiation exposure limit, in spite of the danger to their customers to make money. City warns of cell phone linked to cancer after a person removes a tumor on the left side of his head where the phone was pressed for long periods of time. Thank you.